Um, if I could ask you all, please, just before we start, to stand up and uh, let's uh, have Renee take us through the national anthem. And uh, great news, we'll have her a little bit later on, and I'm going to tell you more about her fantastic voice. And I'm, I'm always, I'm always, um, I don't know what the word is, I love watching people singing the national anthem, because I find that there's a part of the anthem that everybody knows, and the rest of it is sort of mumble along. <laughs> and then the bit they know, they go in full voice, they get really excited. So, Renee, thank you very, very much indeed. We look forward to uh, you a little bit later on as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2022 South Africa AGOA Exporter Awards. Um, and it really is an exciting day, an exciting event, exciting moment uh, to recognize achievement. If I could just say a warm welcome to you. Uh, Andy Karras, the USAID Southern Africa Mission Director, uh, Cynthia Griffin, Minister Council, U.S. Foreign Commercial Services from the Department of Trade, Industry and Cooperation. Welcome to uh, uh, Willem van der Spey, Acting Deputy Director General. Uh, Joseph uh, Sinona, Chief Director, Export Development, uh, Promotion and Outward Investment. Uh, Ntatisi uh, Maruloche, uh, Acting Director, Export Promotion Americas. Uh, Rose Blatch, Executive Director, International Trade Institute of Southern Africa. Uh, Alan Hackner, Project Development Specialist, USAID, Southern Africa Regional Economic Growth Office. Our esteemed judges, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very warm welcome to you all. And if I've left anybody out, what do we say? All protocols observed, yes indeed. Which reminds me of a story of a guy who um, was about to speak and it was delayed a little bit, so he thought he'd have a little drink and his friend just said to him, listen, you're gonna have to do a speech, are you sure you should be drinking? And he says, don't worry, don't worry, I'll just say all protocols observed. So he went up, started his speech and he's, and he's trying to remember. Uh, and then he says, uh, all pretty girls observed. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the awards program that we're recognizing today uh, really is about recognizing uh, and rewarding outstanding performance and noteworthy efforts of uh, South African exporters in uh, open, overcoming market entry hurdles, achieving success, and consistent trade with the United States. Uh, and we all know what AGOA really is about. I mean, it's about providing new market opportunities 
Uh, and in that process, what AGOA has done is help bolster economic growth, promote economic and political reform. And it really has been a great vehicle over time. And I would dare say that as we go into this, um, I don't even know if we can call it the COVID-19 post yet, recovery period of COVID-19, it's vehicles like this that really can make a difference for us. And today we're recognizing those people who saw the opportunity and not just saw it, but ran with it and ran with it well. So well done to you for seizing the day, as it were. And uh, we're going to be meeting you and recognizing you and celebrating you uh, at this occasion. So thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to come together like this uh, to celebrate uh, your achievements. We have a pretty simple program in the end. Um, we're going to have a few guest speakers that we've invited uh, to share their thoughts with us on this special day. And uh, throughout the proceedings, you'll be introduced to some of these outstanding businesses. And uh, we'll also be announcing the winners, nominees and winners in the various categories. Uh, and it's a celebration, isn't it? And you can't have a celebration without music. And so Renee is going to do some amazing things for us. Uh, she's uh, performed all over the world, but uh, I'll tell you more about her uh, later. Um, and just a word of warning. We live in a world of load shedding. And uh, to those of you who are watching online, welcome to you. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. We believe we may have load shedding at about 4.30. And what that might mean for you at home is there'll be a slight disruption. Uh, don't worry, we're going to reboot and then you'll be with us again. It shouldn't take too long. So welcome aboard if you're watching from home. Thanks so much for joining us here. Uh, in uh, uh, Centurion in uh, uh, South Africa. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, let's begin as I introduce our first speaker. And uh, this is a woman who really knows and understands uh, uh, trade development and education. Uh, please put your hands together for the Executive Director of the International Trade Institute of Southern Africa, Rose Blatch. I'd like to express my appreciation for all the people that have come from far and wide. I know we have a lot of people that are here from other parts of the world, and we really appreciate having you present with us today. I'd also like to thank our guests, our guests from the Department of Trade and Industry and, Co and Competition who are here with us today, and of course, my colleagues and partners USAID and SATI Hub, whose help has been absolutely invaluable to us in the organization of this. Um, there's been so much time spent on little details, so I hope that you enjoy them um, today. Um, I wanted to mention a little bit about AGOA, the African Growth and Development Act, sorry, Growth and Opportunities Act, because when we were initially talking to companies in the country, many of them didn't know that AGOA existed. And a, a lot of them also were, they knew about the general system of preferences, the special arrangements South Africa has with the United States, but they didn't know that it had been extended to incorporate more product lines than before. And so, because I know this is live streaming and we're talking to people beyond this room, of course we, we have the converted in here, but hopefully we're going to get more people excited about a wonderful opportunity, which extends now until 2025. In fact, I, as far as I could see from my research, the end date is actually the 29th of June, which is today, three years time. So if you're not taking advantage of this great opportunity right now, you've got three years to get going and to establish yourself in the marketplace and get a foothold for your company there. If you can make it in the United States, you can really make it almost anywhere. It's one of the toughest markets, but we'll be hearing more about that later from some of our judges, those that are actually in the States and did all this work looking at what you have done and assessing your achievements 
and getting excited about what we have to offer. So thank you to all of you who have done such a great job here. A little bit about Atresa. How do we fit into all this? Um, well, we've been around for 26 years now, um, operating largely in the trade, well, trade development field, doing a lot of short course training, a lot of um, distance learning, training towards qualifications. And what always happens when you're involved in the training field and you happen to be a teacher, a lot of consulting because everybody comes back to you as soon as they strike a problem. So we've moved into a lot of project work. As a result, we've done things like the trade strategy for the city of Schwani. We helped the city of Cape Town to develop a trade development agency there in 2000 and 2001, 2003, somewhere around there. We've been very involved in mentoring programs for West Grow and, and we've done a lot of work for trade and investment KwaZulu-Natal as well. So we've moved around. We've also done a lot of the training for the Department of Trade and Industries, economic people going abroad. They're out there to help you, I hope you know. And, and you can locate them through the Department of Trade and Industry and Competitions website. So if, if you don't know about those that are in the States that are there waiting to be of service to you, find out. So as far as our um, education services are concerned, for a long time we've been part and parcel of the International Association of Trade Training Organisations, which is a British registered company, but with a global membership. And the, the, the reason for this was because we wanted to produce a qualification that was recognised everywhere. We deal with international trade. To, to be good at international trade, you have to be internationally uh, recognised and also you have to achieve international standards. So this is why we got involved with that and ended up for our sins heading up the new accreditation, global accreditation system for, for everybody who was a member of that. So we have connections all over the place, including the United States, and you're going to hear from some of them tonight. Well, this afternoon. Hopefully it's not going to go on till tonight, too late. Um, and, of course, we have this wonderful group of, of alumni that have been through our programs and have come back to always try and assist us in some way. We are a non-profit organisation, by the way. So... One of the great things about this is that you can actually see the fruits of your labour over the years. You know, you can you see what happens to people who started with you when they were youngsters and today they're at the helm of big organisations. So we have a lot to be grateful for and we hope to help all of you. And this is why we have also donated some bursaries to the winners tonight to our programmes, which are distance learning, in one case, we've got an online course that we are offering. Um, and we hope that you will take these up because we believe that they will really help you. The, the one course, the, the diploma course that we have, actually gives access to a business designation that is globally recognised, the World Trade Professional. So the glory of that is that whoever you're dealing with in an international market will know that you're a professional. And we found that people moving around the world have, have found this very worthwhile to have because it's given them instant acceptance. Right, um, a little bit about the awards. This year we've added a couple of awards to those that we had on offer last year. So apart from our big company and our medium-sized company and our small company, we are also recognising women earned the, best, the, the biggest, well, the most, how should we put this? The company, the woman earned company that has achieved the most in terms of exports under Agoa during the past year. And the same applies to the, the best under Agoa black exporting company. And then we have a special category tonight 
which deals with youth in exports to Goa. So we're looking at people within Goa exporting companies that have really made a major contribution to the achievements of the company in that area. And finally, we've got a few special certificates that we're handing out to people that the judges felt, although they hadn't won, a co won any category, that they had excelled in certain areas and we should recognise them. So we will be dealing with that later. Thank you very much. Uh, Rose, thanks very, very much indeed uh, for those words and uh, all the great work that you're doing actually in uh, education and uh, trade development. Thank you so, so much, uh, Rose. Um, all right, so um, the other key person that's here is the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, who by and large create an enabling environment, don't they, for uh, you to be able to do what you do and do so well. And so to uh, say a few words, it's my great pleasure to welcome the acting DDG at the DT. I see. Uh, please welcome uh, Willem van der Spey. Program Director, representative of the U.S. Department of Commerce, representatives of the U.S. AID, Satyad, representatives of ITRISA, our exporters present here, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. It's a great honor to be in your presence today for this important event. My special thanks goes to IDRISA and the USAID SATI Hub for organizing this event, which recognizes South African companies that have made great strides in implementing the AGOA program. The aim of the AGOA Exporter Awards is to give distinction and exposure to exporters in the SADC region who have successfully utilized the AGOA to increase their market access and opportunity to export to the United States. It also aims to incentivize and encourage a greater share of African firms to explore innovative ways of improving their global export competitiveness, particularly within the United States. In light of the contribution of exports to expanding manufacturing and industrial output, the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, the DTIC, is focused on increasing the value of exports with greater South African value addition, drawing in more black and women-owned firms and diversifying the spatial composition of exporting firms. The aim is to support firms to reach strategic export markets through a more concentrated focus on those markets. As a key trade partner for South Africa, in the last 18 months, the department has undertaken a number of initiatives to promote trade with the United States. In March 2021, the inaugural Black Business Summit was hosted, followed by webinars respectively undertaken in partnership with the American Chamber of Commerce, AmCham, U.S. trade representatives on funding opportunities for infrastructure, trade investment, as well as the USAID Trade Investment Hub. Recently, we also supported the participation of a delegation at the Biotechnology Innovation Organization, BioConvention, held in San Diego in June 2022. Underpinning our engagement with the U.S. market, though, is the access we enjoy under GOA. This marks 22 years since the enactment of the GOA legislation, with the current legislation set to expire in 2025. Over these years, South Africa has exported over $52.5 billion worth of products to the U.S. duty-free under GOA, as well as the Generalized System of Preferences, or GSP, as it's called. It is also gratifying to see that South Africa's GOA exports reached $2.7 billion in 2021 following a pandemic year decline in 2020. In this regard, top 10 exports undergo included motor vehicles and parts, iron and steel, fruits and nuts, organic chemicals, pearls, beverages, chemical products, reactors and boilers, aluminum and plastics. Amongst agricultural products, fruit and nuts and beverages have done well. South African exports of citrus continue to increase to the United States, as well as wines, and there is potential to further increase the share of these products in our exports to the, to the United States. In particular, government is engaging with the U.S. government on issues around citrus black spot, 
that if resolved, may see additional export of citrus from provinces such as Limpopo, Mpumalanga, and the Eastern Cape. Further, South Africa currently does not export any meat products due to sanitary and phytosanitary issues, which if resolved, will see South Africa exporting lamb and ostrich meat, amongst other products. The issuing of these export awards bears testament to the fact that the grower preferences remain very important to many South African and regional exporters. For South Africa, AGOA underpins a strong and growing mutually beneficial trade investment relationship with the United States. Lately, it's also a key enabler to unlock opportunities as we implement the various industrial sector master plans which the DTIC is championing. AGOA enables South Africa to increase exports of value-added products to the United States, as can be reflected in the products, for example, top products being exported is automotive components. And through these value-added exports, we contribute positively toward our national imperatives to boost industrialization and create jobs. Also, AGOA supports inter-Africa trade and industrialization that in turn promotes the, the development of regional value chains. As an example, currently garment manufacturing firms have been operating in Lesotho, producing garments almost entirely for the US market. South African companies in turn export some trims, such as zips, buttons, sewing, thread, wading, tapes and elastics to Lesotho. As a result, Lesotho's textile industry has expanded while South African exporters are also benefiting. This is not to say that we don't have challenges implementing the program. South Africa is one of the leading non-oil AGOA exporters to the US, but our utilization rates are still very low. On average, we utilize about 150 to 300 of the total 1,835 AGOA lines and between 400 to 600 lines out of the 3,400 GSP lines. We have not been able to take full advantage of these preferences, prim primarily due to a range of factors that restrict access to the US market, including section 232 tariffs implemented against exports of steel and aluminum, the procurement system under the Bioamerica Act, the time it takes for approvals related to the export of plant and animal products. Also, most exporters are small and medium enterprises and therefore the costs associated with having US agents as required under the Food Safety Modernization Act significantly increases the cost of exporting. As a result, this discourages many exporters of food products. Lastly, some products of export interest like canned peaches, manganese used in electronic technologies are not covered under GOA presently. South Africa remains a developing country with the triple challenges of high unemployment, high poverty levels, as well as high inequality levels. We therefore need to onboard many more companies to take advantage of the GOA preferences. I have no doubt that through our collective efforts, we will celebrate more exporters which enter the US market through this initiative. As you know, many of the South African companies exporting to the USA under Goa are located in some of our rural provinces, thus creating much needed jobs, including for the youth and women in those communities. A Goa remains, remains vital for South Africa to attract foreign direct investment to expand the manufacturing sector in South Africa and for the opportunities to grow and manufacture exports from South Africa. I want to urge South African companies, big and small, to take advantage of the program for the remaining years, to formulate export networks and work with government to scale up market access. Regarding the future of the US-Africa trade investment relationship beyond 2025, the African Ministers of Trade in their meeting in October 2021 resolved to strongly urge the US Congress to extend an improved AGOA Plus framework beyond 2025. Ladies and gentlemen, let us celebrate the achievements of our exporters today and further build on their successes to grow our existing exporters while also working on introducing new exporters to the benefits of AGOA. I thank you. Philem, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, I think those statistics tell a remarkable story about uh, uh, trade and the opportunities between the US and uh, South Africa and uh, vehicles such as AGOA um, really do give businesses a real chance to spread wings and uh, make a difference, not just for the businesses themselves, but for our economy and also uh, creating jobs. So uh, as he said, take advantage of uh, this opportunity and it can be a real, real game changer. Thank you so much indeed, uh, Willem.
and uh, for the enabling work that uh, your department continues to do. Willem van der Speet, thank you very much. Right, so up next is somebody who might not remember me, actually. I remember him. I interviewed him a few weeks ago. Uh, there was a development happening in the Western Cape, and uh, we spoke, and it just reminded me, actually, of my job. It's, and I forgot to tell you who I am. I'm Peter Dora, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and it reminds me of a story when I, I was uh, going to the airport, and the taxi driver kept on looking back in the mirror, you know, looking at me in the back seat. And, and as we got close, he says, give me a clue. And I said, uh, Pete and Dora, SABC. And he says, no, which terminal, A or B? <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please welcome USAID Southern Africa Mission Director, Andy Karras. Peter, thank you very much for the kind introduction and for the kind reminder. And I remember when I came in and we greeted, I said, I've heard this voice somewhere. And uh, I've been in South Africa for just under a year, but one of my very first occasions was indeed uh, when I was in Cape Town and we were out there for a health program. And I was very new to the country, like a month in, and I was advised that I was gonna be on national television interviewed, and this all came up very quickly. And Peter was the very kind host of the show who took it easy on me, not too hard questions but it was quite, uh, quite an entree into South Africa and it's great to meet you again. And uh, thank you for your great work. I know you're doing amazing work in broadcasting. Um, on behalf of all of us uh, here and I'll recognize uh, great colleagues from the US mission and on behalf of our embassy, it's indeed a great pleasure to be here uh, with all of you today on this occasion. Let me recognize, of course, some of the the speakers and the representatives at the head table, Mr. Willem van der Spuy, who we just heard from, the Acting Deputy Director General, Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, Mr. Joseph Sanona, Chief Director, Export Development and Outward Investment at Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, Ms. Ntatisi Morholoje, Deputy Director, Export Development and Outward Investment of DTIC, and Ms. Rose Blatch, thank you for your words, Executive Director of the International Trade Institute of Southern Africa. I know we have with us as well senior government officials, representatives, of course, of the South African private sector, members of the media, all protocols observed, as we say. Uh, it is indeed a great pleasure um, to be here today for the 2022 South Africa AGOA Export Awards. In November 2021, I know this group came together to launch the first annual Exporter Awards event, and I'm particularly delighted to be here to represent, together with my colleagues from the U.S. Embassy, the 2022 edition. AGOA, I'm reminded, started a couple of decades ago in 2000, and that was the year I actually joined USAID. And I've worked uh, for most all of those years on this amazing continent. And I've had the opportunity to work with AGOA in each of the hubs of USAID. Uh, first in East Africa, I remember being in Nairobi, and I came on board as an agricultural officer with USAID. And I remember when it was AGOA time, it was women's development time. And we were working with women's groups who were exporting amazing art, and particularly the Kenya baskets, which I'm sure many of you have seen. And of course, there are baskets from across the continent, each very distinctive and beautiful. But there I remember uh, working uh, with women's groups in particular on exporting under a Goa. Uh, some years later, I served over in West Africa, um, in Ghana, where again, I had the great honor to work with a Goa and a trade hub there. And there it was, of course, amazing Ghana textiles, the Ashante textiles and colors that you've all seen of Ghana. And in between, I was over in Rwanda, and of course, the coffee of the Mil Colleen, the Thousand Hills of Rwanda, was making its way into markets in Starbucks coffee. A lot more expensive on the US side than it is in Kigali, um, but wonderful coffee. So in each of these cases, I truly saw the power of a Goa 
and how it touched uh, communities, exporters, both downstream processors, exporters, at each stage of the value chain, and truly impacted uh, inclusive development. So I'm very pleased to have been part of the uh, AGOA journey, really since its start from the field in different parts of this amazing continent. Um, again, very honored to be here with terrific colleagues who I'd like to recognize. Uh, foremost, Cynthia Griffin, Minister Counselor, Commercial Affairs of the U.S. Foreign Commercial Service. And you know FCS is indeed our gold standard agency really concerned with commerce, with investment, with trade. Cynthia, thank you so much for being here. And I hope many of you will meet Cynthia. She's a key ally for you at our embassy. Also want to recognize Alan Hackner, who's a senior project specialist with AID, who in fact manages this trade hub program and has for many years. So great to be with Alan. Uh, Tiboho Sepong, I know is behind a camera somewhere. Where is Tiboho? There she is. Tiboho is with our Development Outreach Communications Office. And very pleased. And I see Eva seated next to her, who is her assistant on the camera today. And also really delighted to be here with Ahmed Ahmed, with Ayman Ahmed, who is our intern in the front office at USAID. And it's great to be with young people uh, who are learning the development work that we do at AID. And of course, Frank O'Brien and his great team with the Trade Hub. Frank, thank you for the work that you do as a, a key partner for AID in making all of this possible. South Africa's Integrated National Export Strategy, INES, or the Export 2030, remains, as we know, a key driving force of collaboration between the U.S. government and the government of South Africa, where AGOA is concerned. Export 2030 is boosting exports of proudly South Africa-made products. Today, we also celebrate our mutually beneficial um, pr uh, partnership, private sector trade promotion with the International Trade Institute of Southern Africa. ITRISA, can I use, say it that way? Is that okay? Can we pronounce the acronym? ITRISA, and thank you again for being the host of today's event. Special thanks to ITRISA for making this possible. The U.S. government shares a vision with all of those partners that I mentioned to promote the role of private sector-led economic growth. In the U.S., our new economic growth policy advances the commitment of USAID, where I work and am privileged to lead, and the broader U.S. government, our interagency, FCS, Foreign Commercial Service, and all of our interagency, to promote inclusive, sustained, and resilient economic growth in countries like South Africa and beyond. And those words, I'm a development worker at heart. I uh, started as a Peace Corps volunteer and have worked across the continent in a lot of villages and some cities, but mostly in villages. Uh, that's where I started. And these words, um, inclusive economic development, el uh, development that really impacts people at the community level is very important to me. And I know it's very important to all of us. Um, AGOA, we're seeing the export. We're seeing a lot of the upstream, the processes, the traders. But I know from a development perspective uh, that that power of AGOA, in its best sense, impacts not only upstream, but truly impacts downstream, has impacts that are inclusive. And I was so delighted, I'm always so encouraged, inspired to hear the work that we're very deliberately doing with women and the women that we'll recognize here today, to recognize the youth that you mentioned are gonna be recognized here today. Um, this is really so vital. Again, I'm very new to South Africa, um, but I'm very aware of the importance of youth, such an important demographic in this country and across Africa. Of course, the vital role of women um, and the importance of gender equity, of equality, so important in South Africa, in the United States, and around the world. The importance of education and skills development. This, these, these priorities are why USAID supports AGOA. AGOA is a very important end, but how we get there by investing in youth, by investing in women, by investing in skills development, by investing in education. That's a prosperous country, that's a peaceful country, that's an educated country. And trade will not succeed where we don't have educated people, skilled people, gainfully employed people, 
people who feel they can fulfill their dreams and their aspirations. Security is key, as we know. Rule of law is key. Processes are key. Commercial treaties are key. And it's going to take all those legs on the school, on the stool, to stand up a go of it. The exporter awards are a demonstration of support of the U.S. government for South Africa's export-led economic growth model. The U.S. government has supported the socialization of AGOA in South Africa through various well-received fora and platforms, including the recent AGOA regional peer learning event in March 22 in Cape Town. These efforts are ensuring the uptake of AGOA and helping to increase exports from South Africa to the U.S. Today, we're seeing some of the very impactful results from the companies represented here. Despite the turbulence caused in these last two years by COVID-19, the pandemic, 2021 was a very impactful year for South African exports to the United States, yielding an impressive $2.7 billion U.S. dollars worth of goods that included agricultural products, textile, apparel, as well as mineral, minerals and metal that were exported to the United States during these past couple of years. The U.S., through USAID, linked five South African firms to Albert Scott. Albert Scott is an e-commerce management firm that provides storage, marketing, and reputation management services in the United States. Adam Scott also lists its products with the U.S.-based e-commerce giant, Amazon. As a result, those five South African companies that teamed up with Albert Scott, those firms including Banghook Chili Oil, Cape Cobra, Chaloner South Africa, Orcs Desert Salt, and Rush Nutrition are now trading and establishing themselves on Amazon. And now Americans can enjoy South Africa's chili sauces and salts in their homes, which bolsters, of course, the South African economy in return. While this event recognizes those who have contributed to these impressive numbers and reach into the American market, there is, as we know, great potential and capacity to improve upon and diversify these product lines utilizing AGOA. Governments, the U.S. government, South African government, so many eligible under AGOA need to keep expanding efforts to diversify economies, connect with capital investment. We're here to be partners in this undertaking to strengthen economies, to continue collaboration with the private sector. Together, we look forward to the day, and it's coming soon, and fast approaching that South African snack bars, signature leather products are being enjoyed not in, just in the United States, but around the world, benefiting the people of South Africa. Allow me once again to thank our good friends at Teresa for hosting the Exporter Awards event this year. Judging by the performance of the nominees, I am very confident that South Africa's private sector will only continue to expand in the future through quality exports. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to thank the exporters present here, in particular those nominated for awards, and wish them all the best. I hope this experience will spur all of your aspirations to continue to grow your businesses and the South African economy as a whole. On behalf of the U.S. government, the interagency colleagues represented here, I wish to thank you all for your partnership, but above all, to thank you for your dedication to achieving broad-based, inclusive, social, economic development in South Africa that will stand to benefit AGOA, will stand to benefit this great country, the youth of this great country, uh, for years to come. I thank you very much. Uh, Andy, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, and thank you so much for, um, yeah, your investment in our businesses. Um, not just our businesses, I think our women and our youth in particular. I'm always reminded about just how young our continent is. The average age of a citizen on this continent is 19 years, 0.7. 19 years old. So that means most of what's going to happen in the world is going to happen from Africa. 
So we thank you so much in investing in our young people in particular, uh, because our continent will be very well invested if we develop these young minds and uh, give them the opportunities. Uh, it's not a small thing, uh, this AGOA gig. It really is a game changer in many instances. And uh, many of you here, I think, are testimony to that. And uh, so we thank you so much for the partnership you bring uh, to the people of South Africa and our businesses and helping us with our aspirations. Thank you so much indeed, Andy Karras and the United States. Okay, so our next uh, guest uh, couldn't be with us today, but we thank so much for technology that we're able to still hear from our next guest. And uh, they recorded this for us uh, just so that we uh, could hear and his thoughts. And uh, to share his thoughts with us is the former uh, NASBITE International President. Please welcome, uh, virtually, Dr. Leroy Lowe. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Leroy Lowe, and I'm uh, honored to be here, honestly. Um, I think it's fabulous that everybody is, is meeting for such a, a fantastic event. Um, I understand you're gathered at the African Pride Irene Country Lodge, which is you know, beautiful. Um, it's, you know, it's a magical place, really. So I'm, I'm sure you're uh, enjoying your stay. I hope you're enjoying your stay. Um, I'd like to thank the International Trade Institute of Southern Africa for hosting the event. Um, obviously, USAID, uh, Southern African Trade and Investment Hub, for their support. USAID, uh, with their history of providing humanitarian aid, uh, working to improve global health, empowering women, girls, inspiring partnerships, really just trying to strengthen democracy and support global stability by, you know, dealing with inequities that we see. What a, what a great mission. And, you know, ultimately we're, we're all after the same thing. We're looking for a more prosperous world for all. So thank you to USAID for, for their support in, in this uh, activity. I'd like to say a special thank you to Rose Blatch, Executive Director of the International Trade Institute of Southern Africa, for inviting me uh, to speak and um, for her efforts. I'm the past president of the North American Small Business International Trade Educators Association. Um, NASBITE International is what we uh, go by. I'm also a senior trade consultant for the Forum for International Trade Training in Canada. I'm based in Canada. As past president of NASBITE, my goal was to help trainers who train exporting companies how to export. So, you know, I've spent 25 years teaching small businesses, small to medium sized businesses, how to export from Canada, the US and other countries. Um, at NASBITE, of course, we work with uh, companies in Canada, the US and Mexico, and we're really focused on helping them export, you know, inside NAFTA or CUSMA as it's now known or USMCA. Um, I have to tell you that, you know, I've, I've been in an exports, uh, exporting business, I guess, for almost 30 years. Um, I started, um, my background's in aerospace engineering. I started with an electronics company, US-based company. Um, I traveled uh, to 25 countries managing agents and distributors. I have to say that when I started my first job, this is really important, um, and this is before I became a trainer, but when I started my first job in, in the export business, um, my company had just laid off 40% of their staff and it was devastating. Um, I, I had nothing to do with it at the time. I was new to the company. So I just mean, I, I wasn't really involved in the decision-making. I just know how, how bad that felt. And I had met enough people and I knew enough people to know what an impact it had on their lives. And, you know, I kind of 
I kind of realized very quickly, you know, this is not something I want to ever go through again. And I spent the next five to six years traveling to 100 companies, meeting with agents, uh, sorry, traveling to 25 countries, meeting with agents and distributors, and building new business for the company. Um, I had guidance. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, you know, completely on my own. But I worked with a small team. And we were a medium-sized company, you know, maybe 80 people. And over the next few years, we doubled the size of our business. You know, we added all those jobs back and more. And we did it by, we had a new product line. Uh, we built business in every country that we went to. We, you know, we built partnerships. Um, we had agents, we had distributors. In some cases, we had uh, uh, strategic I'll call them partnerships. They weren't joint ventures. Uh, they weren't incorporated joint ventures, but they were definitely strategic alignments between ourselves and other companies. And that really set the stage for my career in exporting. I think that exporting is a, a fabulous objective for anyone. And if you're in a business development, you, st you start to feel like, you know, people's jobs are on the line, but you know that if you do it right, you can make a huge difference. In the next 25 years, I, 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 did, I, I learned to be a trainer. I, I left the corporate job. I, I started an international business program at a college. I got very involved in the professional associations uh, in Canada and the U.S. That's how I became a senior trade consultant in Canada. I've trained trainers in government agencies that support exports in Latin America, in the Caribbean, in Southeast Asia, in the Middle East, in Canada, in the United States, at many world trade centers. Because I know that if I train trainers and they train companies, or if they're training trainers that are training companies, it's going to have a huge impact. So what are we doing here tonight? And, and, and perhaps why me? Well, I, I want to share maybe a little bit of my perspective about these awards. So let's start with the African Growth and Opportunity Act. What a great, what a great opportunity. Um, as you know, it provides duty-free access to the U.S. market for over 1,800 products on top of, you know, the 5,000 products that are already eligible for duty-free access under their generalized system of preferences program. And the only requirements are that you know, the countries are, are making progress towards a market-based economy, rule of law, political pluralism, excuse me, and the right of due process, and that they eliminate barriers to trade and investment because, uh, you know, the, the goal here is that everybody benefits. And, you know, re goals like reducing pro poverty and reducing corruption and pr protecting human rights in some respects, this comes with trade. We believe, we being people that are, you know, have faith in the, in, the, in the fact that prosperity doesn't have to be one way. Prosperity can be mutual in every transaction. We believe that, you know, trade is impacting the world in a positive way. You know, what we know and, and what I know each of you know, because you're in your own companies, is that the goal of exporting is to bring prosperity to your business. But that's, you know, that's just one step. Your business becomes more prosperous. Your community benefits. The people in your individuals in your company benefits. Your community benefits. And ultimately, if everybody does their job, the whole country benefits. And, you know, what we've seen in, is with, with prosperity and wealth in countries from trade, that that means more opportunities, better ability to support the citizens which creates a stronger economy that has less inequity, more fair processes, better infrastructure, which is what we're all after. So, you know, why me? I guess um, I, I don't want to focus this on me, but I mean, what do I have to bring to you? Well, in my opinion, this whole program is a great opportunity for your company. Look at the goals underneath the, you know, how do they decide who gets the awards here? You know, how innovative is your business? We know that innovation is critical in trade. 
what kind of market entry strategy are you using? Because a good market entry strategy can make all the difference. So knowing the different types of opportunities you have, whether that's a, an agent or a distributor or a joint venture, or maybe you're pegging backing the exporting of your product with another company, whatever the method you're using, you know, we're looking for innovative innovation. And if you've thought a lot about this, you know, it's going to, the, the better your solution for market entry, the more successful you're going to be. Are you having a positive impact on the people in your company? Because we know successful exporters are good companies. I mean, with growth comes opportunity and the, and the leadership has all kinds of ways to inspire internally, you know, getting empowering people internally to take charge of things and, and sharing the, you know, the various activities that come with export and all the diff, you know, all those little challenges, the logistical challenges, the financial challenges, the marketing challenges, making that market, making that product just right for the market. You know, these things don't come easily. And <clears throat> at the same time, you have to inspire a work-life balance and, you know, while people are learning and developing to make sure that your whole company is benefiting, you're not just burning them out. If you do these things right, you know, your company will succeed. And, you know, good strategy can help, obviously. Um, corporate social respons responsibility initiatives can help. Good quality programs can help. Because your customers, the people you're trying to get to, they will appreciate steps you've taken to be progressive and to try and improve things. And there's a, there's a good appetite in, in North America from consumers, from buyers, for companies that are socially responsible, for companies that are looking after their employees. Um, that appetite brings opportunity. And if your company's doing those things, everybody benefits. That's going to bring, bring financial prosperity. That's going to help you and your company. That's going to help everybody in your community. That's going to help your country, ultimately. So all I can say, I guess, in, from my heart, uh, is that, first of all, congratulations to all of you. If you're here, that's fantastic. Take these goals, you know, the metrics, the things that you're measuring on and them on and use them as benchmarks to ask yourselves whether or not your company is moving in the right direction. If you've got an innovative product and you're an exporter, and I know all of you are, that's a great, that's a great first step. You know, build that product line, build your customer base, build those partnerships, do good things in your community. Good things will come to you. Good things will come to your country, company, and good things will come to your country. Take care, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very, very much indeed, uh, Dr. Leroy Lowe. Yeah, uh, great opportunity. And uh, perhaps I guess the question uh, that he raised is uh, just make sure you have innovative strategies in play. Um, it's not always easy, but uh, doing things right, the opportunity is there to be exploited. And there are great people here that can help you, advise you, uh, to get those strategies in play uh, because the uh, a go opportunity is there waiting for you uh, to explode your businesses. So uh, Dr. Lowe, as he said, go out there and get the job done. All right, so now our next speaker, we're also going to hear a recorded message from him. Uh, and uh, he's somebody who's, uh, who was sitting in your chair this time last year and uh, was wondering whether he's going to win or not. And he did. He won uh, the small-sized exporter to the U.S. under uh, the Go Award. And uh, to share his thoughts with uh, t potentially the winners for this year, um, it's my great pleasure to welcome the CEO of Feldskun, Nick Dreyer. Hi there, folks. My name is Nick Dreyer and I'm the CEO of Feldskin Shoes. Firstly, I'd like to thank the folks at the International Trade Institute of South Africa for having me chat with you today as part of the South African Goa Exporter of the Year Award. Now, Feldskin last year was a very grateful and happy recipient of an award and um, our relationship 
uh, with the organization is, is healthy and it's a privilege to be back. Um, so I was asked to talk a little bit today and there's a bunch of stuff I could choose to talk about, but I thought I'd split it in three. The first part of what I want to tell you is a little bit of the history of Falcon Shoes and how we got to be where we are today. The second is an anecdotal story of our first export that we ever did and our foray into selling shoes abroad. And then lastly, I just want to address quickly the importance of the work that is done in exporting is and how vital that is to companies in South Africa and the importance of how it relates to South Africa. So let's start with a little history lesson about Felskin. Of course, Felskin started 500 odd, 600 years ago and the shoe itself has always been loved. It's always had a reputation for being comfortable. It's had a reputation for being hard wearing and it's never taken itself too seriously. A little bit like South Africa and South Africans. And the idea around Felskin, a business, Felskin PTY Limited, the business that we have, started about five and a half odd years ago in a conversation between myself and my co-founder, Ross Sortner. We've been mates for years and um, we went to the same school and uh, we spent a lot of time during days talking on the phone. And uh, at that time, I was in a business that was struggling and uh, Ross was in a business that was struggling. He was a builder and I was in the events business. And we thought about what we could do. And uh, we were just chatting about stuff and we couldn't ever come up with anything. And um, what happened was, on one of these occasions we were just talking, I was driving back from Plettenberg Bay, which is about a six hour drive to Cape Town. And Ross was driving around in Cape Town being a builder. And we got into a conversation around the Olympics and specifically the South African Olympic team. And what was interesting is that when they went to Rio, they wore these sort of nondescript South African flag tracksuits that had been made in some other part of the world. And the, the team just looked shoddy. They didn't look great. They didn't look South African. They didn't look, they didn't, they didn't make us feel like they were South African. And the question was, what could they have been wearing? And we came up with the idea that they could have been wearing Felskin. But of course, Felskin had looked the same way for, for 500 years. So what we decided to do in that same car journey is to get a friend of mine who could do a bit of photoshopping. And what he did was he, uh, he photoshopped colour laces and, sol and soles onto the shoes. And as we got it, we knew that that was something. And we started a business. We started a shoe business. This is a builder and an events guy. So we're not the most qualified guys to start a shoe or an apparel business. We knew nothing about how to make shoes. We knew nothing about social media. We knew nothing about how to sell stuff online. But we spent nights doing it, learning, and we grinded. And for a full year, we worked hard on the project and, uh, and Falskin was born. What's um, incredible about it is that our first, I think our first 300 shoes, because we didn't know if it would work. So we put it on, on we built a website on Wix and we, we went live as a company on Facebook and we said that the legend is back and uh, we ran a campaign for the legend is back and in about four days we sold 300 pairs of shoes which was problematic because we'd never made shoes and uh, we didn't even know how to make them <laughs> so we had to phone everybody and say listen we're so sorry we'll give you your money back right away or if you hang in there you'll probably get your shoes in three or four months and then we'll deliver them to you and I'm so pleased to say that everybody hung in there with us and supported us as a business which makes us very, very happy, of course. Um, so that's the story of how Felskin kind of started. And it's improbable. And what's important about it is that uh, the, the, you don't have to have your skill sets aligned to doing something incredible in this country because we're lucky enough to live in a place where there's opportunity. Um, so that's the little history lesson. The second part of what I wanted to talk about was our first experience in exporting and delivering and getting shoes abroad. So we start Felskin. And uh, because we'd built the online store and because we kind of we felt good that we could we could do this, um, Ross and I decided immediately to go and build uh, Felskin in the UK. And we found a friend who had a garage and uh, could put shoes in a, in a, in, in a little warehousey sort of garagey sort of thing. 
and we had to go there and uh, build a site and get going. And uh, so we did that, but of course we didn't have any shoes. To, we didn't have any shoes in the UK, so we had to export our first 350 pairs. And we exported our first 350 pairs of shoes in six suitcases via Dubai on Emirates Airlines. And <laughs> knew absolutely nothing about how to go about doing these sorts of things. I hope I'm not incriminating myself here somehow, but we, um, we flew through the UK and uh, just like nonchalantly kind of walked through customs and the next thing we were in London and we had these shoes and we dropped them off with our mate and, uh, and then built a website and started selling shoes. Um, and that was our first foray into exporting products. Um, thank goodness an adult joined our business in the form of Dricky Zonda, who some of you met last year. She's our chief operating officer and our supply chain manager and one of the most experienced importers, exporters in the game. And uh, it manifesting itself in us winning an award um, last year. So, it, it, you know, even though we, we had absolutely no idea how to do it, it was critical that we learned quickly. Um, and then we did that. And now we're one of, the, one of the bigger exporters of footwear from South Africa. So it's an interesting way to have begun. Um, but it also talks to just starting and learning. And this is the this is the story this is the third piece of what i wanted to say you know i said earlier we live in an amazing country where there's opportunity to start businesses um and it's true and south africa is a is a big place and there's a lot of customers here but the truth of the matter is if we can find a way to export our products into into countries in the world that find us interesting, that celebrate our uniqueness, and we can start selling them there. That's when you will get to a point where you truly scale South African businesses. And what does it mean to start scaling South African businesses? And in the Falskun world, it's very simple. We went from two guys in a two by two meter office in Woodstock, mostly remotely to be honest, to start off with, to six years later, employing 20 people, 25 odd people in our business, and indirectly probably north of 300. And that happens because we could start selling our shoes in other markets, in export markets. So the key thing for our business is to find places outside of South Africa that can identify with our products. Now, in order for that to happen, a couple of things need to be in place. Firstly, you've got to have an authentic story, which we're very blessed we've got. And we're no short supply of authentic stories in South Africa. We're one of the most interesting places and interesting people in the world. And I'll put it to you that we've got some of the most talented individuals on earth. I mean, currently the richest guy in the, in the world is a South African. And he's not alone. He's not the smartest guy. We've got, ki we've got kids here and young people here and adults that can hustle and that are so smart and have such endeavor that we have one of the most exportable storytelling mechanisms and talented people that you could imagine in the world. The second thing is you've got to be able to make good product. Now, there's this pushback. There's always been a pushback about other, pro other countries make better stuff than us. It's a fallacy. We make unbelievable shoes and I'm not taking the credit myself. It's a third generation family called Hopewell Shoes in Durban. They've been doing it unbelievably well for longer than for longer than anybody else. And the reality is in South Africa, we make amazing products. We've got furniture companies in Cape Town. We've got textile factories in Cape Town. We've got um, footwear in Durban. We've got it's, it's like engineering in Durban and Johannesburg. And the reality is that in South Africa, we make unbelievable products. So, if you've got the talent and the resolve and you've got the ingenuity and the creativity, which we tick all of those boxes and we've got the ability to make great product. The only thing that we then need in order to generate true success is the ability to talk to these markets. Now, thankfully, the social and digital environment has allowed us the ability to have our voices heard abroad. I can place an ad to an Australian audience within five minutes. That is, a, that is something that we enjoy during this time that we live in. And South Africans must embrace it. 
the last part is to get their product to them. And to get their product to them, you've got to export your products. And in order to export your products, you've got to have expertise and you've got to have help and you've got to have good advice. And the reason I say that is because in the second part of my story, I told you about two idiots that flew with six bags via Dubai on an airplane to try to get their shoes out there. The reality is that there's many, many others like us wondering how to get their product into the rest of the world. And some of us are further down the line and some of us are far advanced and we're already at the, at the large scale business side. But I urge you to consider and think about how we can help brand new startup businesses to export their product. Whether we help, their, help a little guy fill a container that you're sending over <coughs> or setting up conversations to, to just assist and give advice. Guys, if we're going to make South Africa deservedly win and deservedly find its wonderful place in the sun, we're all going to have to help and we're going to have to get stuck in. And it's only through the help of institutions like this that people that start businesses can find other markets. So I leave you with that. I hope it is mildly entertaining. I, uh, I am grateful for the opportunity to have spoken to you and um, I thank you for your time and I leave you with that challenge. Find a way to help small businesses or younger businesses to get their products into the rest of the world. The rest of the world will appreciate it. Guys, thank you so much and uh, wishing you all a wonderful week. Bye. <laughs> Wow, isn't that a great South African story? I, I just love listening to salt of the earth people uh, coming up with ideas and uh, just running with them. And I think that this is the story of our country um, and the opportunities that are there to sell these great ideas and these great products that we have and believe that we can. Uh, the vehicles are there. A go is one of them. Uh, for us to be able to get out there and sell South Africa uh, in, a, in a very special way. So as he said, get some help. Um, you, you know, we're not all experts in these things, but there are people who can help and guide us. And uh, get exporting. Get South Africa out there and use these vehicles uh, such as Agoa. Nick Dreyer, thank you so much indeed for that wonderful, wonderful message. I remember growing up and... and uh, uh, wishing for a pair of false guns. It's so quite a story, isn't it? Uh, it's giving my age away now, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, um, so we're here to celebrate uh, our nominees and our winners. And um, the hardest part of this job is the judging. Uh, the people that have to look at these entrants, uh, adjudicate, and come up with winners. And so, I, I doff my hat to our judges, I really do. It's one of the hardest things to do, actually. And uh, our South African entries are so competitive, aren't they, in so many categories. But just to get a sense of that judging process, uh, we have three judges that I want you to hear from. The first two, you're going to meet them on screen, and then the uh, third one I'll introduce because uh, he's here with us. But first, let's meet uh, the founder and CEO of uh, Trader Bar, uh, Leia Nihal. And that'll be followed by the director of International Trade Center at uh, Bradley University, Jim Foley. Hi, everyone. My name is Leia Nihal, and I'm the CEO of Trader Bar, and we are a technology company. Trader Bar has created the first business-to-business -business marketplace to promote intra-African trade and services. We promote all kinds of services businesses, whether they are professional services, legal services, financial services, consulting, the kinds of services that help businesses and economies grow. And we really wanted to give um, the services industry an opportunity to showcase their offerings um, and market their services, create new opportunities both within the continent and externally, uh, but also to help, to provide services that help 
companies develop and grow. So that is um, in a nutshell, Trader Bar Services offering. We have another vertical within our business that uh, is related to the export field, and we are building an export facilitation app to unpack the regulatory environment, demystify the regulatory environment in the agri-food industry between South Africa and the United States, between Africa and the United States, and within Africa as a continent. It will culminate in a shipping solution uh, that we hope offers an end-to-end -end, uh, offering to the uh, exporter community. We have a third pillar of our business, which is related to advocacy. And what we really want to do as a business as an, and as an impact-driven startup, uh, we really want to understand the pain points in the export journey. And through our various networks and our various platforms, we want to help exporters um, navigate the pain points in their journey and work with South African government authorities, whether that relates to standards or authorities that give out permits. We really want to work with um, the authorities in question within our own country, uh, within the continent, uh, with um, the US government as well. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a judge in this year's uh, South Africa AGOA Exporter of the Year Awards. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to be here for a great many reasons. And the first one is my relationship with Etresa. I started studying through Etresa when I was a student in my second year of university. As a full-time student, I wanted to be um, a maritime lawyer uh, and I was a little bit bored with my studies and I decided to register for the Diploma in Export Management and International Trade. So Rose has been um, a lecturer of mine that I have not seen for a few decades and we recently got in touch again. Uh, I remember those lessons very well, Rose. Uh, I had to study everything to do with the fields of international trade, from the different types of gantry cranes to the different types of vessels, to packaging and labeling your goods, export law, trade agreements, um, how to exchange business cards with someone in Japan. Uh, it was really incredibly thorough. There were two years of documentation that I had to study. And um, I, I think those very early years were very, very interesting for me and really uh, set me on a journey of working with the South African exporter community. My very first job at the Department of Trade and Industry was South Africa, US, bilateral relations. So um, I also feel that it's, it's incredibly exciting to be part of a USAID um, sponsored program because I organized the Binational Commission when, uh, when Bill Clinton came to visit South Africa and I organized the South African side. I also organized the business delegation when Al Gore was here. Uh, and I advised um, South African exporters on accessing the U.S. market, um, on phytosanitary requirements, FDA requirements, the regulatory environment, um, import duties on the other side. I worked very closely with our offices in New York and Washington, D.C. and Chicago to help South Africans access the U.S. market. So I feel like it's incredible uh, to be part of this process now and I feel that relationship with the U.S. government has also come full circle. So I think for the exporter community, for me this is also a great honor and a great privilege because I've been very close to the exporter community for many years and for me those relationships are also now coming full circle. So um, I think uh, it's, it's really been, uh, it's, it's been amazing to witness the projects that you've proposed. And as an entrepreneur, uh, I really understand what it takes to create an idea, to develop that idea, to test it, to turn it into a product, um, to do your market research, to test, test this product on the market, to make sure it complies with regulatory um, requirements, to um, build your financial pillars, to manage your cash flow, to get cash into your business, to build your marketing pillars, um, your distribution network, to be brave enough um, when we've had an economic downturn in the country even before the pandemic, to navigate the pandemic when we've had travel restrictions and to export your product, to find buyers in another market, 
and to knock on doors, which is never easy, um, to have the tenacity to cope with, uh, you know, rejection that comes your way and to carry on doing what you do. I think it's phenomenal. Uh, I think all of you have done an amazing job and you really are an inspiration. And I think you are the kind of people that really um, will take the South African economy forward. So thank you so much um, for the privilege of being part of this journey and witnessing all these amazing things that you've done. And may you go from strength to strength um, in your businesses and in your journeys. I would firstly like to thank uh, Atresa uh, again for inviting me and for doing such phenomenal work uh, in export education and um, a whole diverse range of projects that you are involved in um, to, to build capacity amongst the export community, both in South Africa and globally. I think you, you have uh, been doing a phenomenal job. So thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I would like to thank USAID. And I think this is a very big thank you because as a former diplomat, I know that most countries only support their own country's export initiatives and never the other way around. Uh, and the US government has broadened its mandate. It's got a development mandate and USAID is here in South Africa to help promote our exports into their markets. It's very unusual in commercial diplomacy for a country to do that. So I think we as South Africans really need to thank USAID and the US government for the phenomenal work that you are doing in our country and in the continent um, to support our exports into your market. So thank you very much for that. And finally, I'd like to thank the exporter community um, for the opportunity to bear witness to your phenomenal journeys um, that you've uh, come through from the ideation of your product to building the financial pillars of your business to um, accessing uh, markets during a pandemic, uh, during an economic downturn, finding buyers in other countries and actually getting your product into those markets. And I think um, that is an absolute inspiration. Uh, and, you know, I think for me, what I would really like to say to you is there was, there was something I was asked in an interview when I was stationed uh, abroad as a diplomat. An interviewer asked me, what is the word that you would use to describe South Africans? What is the word that you would use? One word. And I said resilient. And for me, whatever you've done is testimony to that resilience. And um, I think um, you have done an incredible job and I wish you every success in your businesses. And thank you again for um, the privilege of observing your journeys. Hi, good afternoon. I'm so glad to join you again this year for this uh, wonderful event, recognizing the success of South African exporters to the United States. My name is Jim Foley. I'm with the International Trade Center at Bradley University, right in the heart of the United States. Again, like last year, sorry, I can't be with you in person, but uh, what a different role for me this year. I had the privilege of judging the applications for these uh, awards. And it, it was tough. It was a very tough process because there were great applications. But I thought I'd make a few comments about some of the things I noticed in the awards and, and kind of uh, highlight them. I think one of the most common characteristics is how competitive the award winners and the applicants were in the US market. This is not an easy market, as I said last year. Uh, we have 50 states and territories. Many of them have different laws. Simple things like uh, labeling can vary. And so to see the success, especially the high percent of your total exports going to um, AGOA is just is really impressive. This is not an easy market. And so I think to, to be able to compete here already demonstrates the strength of uh, the companies that apply. The second thing was the responses to COVID. It's been a really horrible time, not just simply because of the health uh, challenges, but also the supply chain. And a couple of the applications talked specifically about actions they had taken. One that impressed me was increasing the inventory held in the United States so that the delays were shortened. That was a brilliant idea. I'm very impressed by that. The other thing is I noticed that many are exhibiting best practices, things that help ease the entry in the United States. An example is the use of trade shows. A number talked about pre-COVID coming to the United States, using trade shows as a way to meet potential buyers. We love trade shows. That's why you see US pavilions at international shows, like uh, the Germans as well, big trade show uh, attendees. 
And these shows can be a very effective way to reach into the US market. It's an efficient way to meet a lot of people, to spend some time to get to know them. Really the only downside is that you're not physically at the location of the potential partner, but you can always use a trade show to identify potential partners and then either on the same trip or on a subsequent trip, come and visit the, the potential distributor agent or joint venture partner. Then there's two things that really stood out for me. And I saw this across the board and that's the culture that you're developing in your companies. This is such an important but difficult thing to get right. One applicant even wrote that we danced together. I, I, I can still see myself in my study reading that. And I just stopped and smiled thinking, this is a company that gets it. This is a company that understands that you have to have a purpose. You have to help lift people up. And I saw this over and over again, where you understood the importance of skilling people up, of giving them opportunities to increase their leadership. This is so important, especially in countries where there are enormous opportunities for people to have their skills lifted up. We have that here in the United States as well. We have many pockets where the skills are totally inadequate for today's workplace. So I want to commend you on being sensitive to that social purpose, to making a difference, and to understanding that at the end of the day, you need to solve a pain in a market, provide a great solution, but you have to do that with great employees. Which leads me to my final point. You know, Doing international trade opens your heart. And I think that's why I saw your heart so many times in these applications. You can't really be prejudiced once you meet many different cultures. And certainly you meet a lot of different characters when you do business with the United States. So again, that's a benefit of the uh, being involved in international trade. It, it touches you personally, and I saw that. So congratulations to all the applicants and a big congratulations to the winners. It was a tough year. You should be very proud of the success that you've achieved. Now, build on that success. If you didn't win, learn from the others. Use it as an opportunity to see what you can do to grow your exports. And for those who did, keep investing in the US market. We need great products. I can't wait to see one of the award winners at Panera Bread next time I'm there. Hey, thanks so much. Take care. Thank you very much indeed, Leia Nihal and Jim Foley, just two of the judges uh, for this year's awards. And I'd like to introduce our third judge who's with us here today, founder of uh, Covert Advisory and is a partner at EY Covert Tax Consulting. Please put your hands together for Dwayne Newman. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks, Peter. Um, I'm now part of EY, so I really appreciated um, you branding yourself, uh, EY with the yellow tie. Um, you obviously got the memo, so um, I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dwayne Newman, um, a partner at EY. Um, and I suppose the question is, uh, why am I here today? Um, it's been an interesting journey I've had with Rose. Okay, um, I've been in the, I suppose, trade advisory space um, since um, I qualified as an accountant. Um, so that's way back in 1994. Yeah, um, and I suppose all of us as South Africans, 1994 means something to us. Okay, um, so it was South Africa opening up to the world. Um, and starting your career, I suppose, outside audit is probably the right way to put it, um, and choosing to be an advisor to help South Africa um, get better access to the world was something I chose. Okay. But to do that, I needed knowledge. So I remember reaching out to Rose uh, when Rose was starting a Teresa and being educated about what in international trade is about. So I'm always uh, for, um, forever thankful to Rose um, for helping me on my own um, career journey. Um, so I spend a lot of my time these days advising importers and exporters. And I wouldn't have been able to do that and I wouldn't have achieved um, 
my own business success without uh, Rose. So Rose, thanks very much for all your contribution to my own career. Thank you. And I think um, even on my own journey working with um, the South African government, so uh, acknowledging uh, DTRC, I uh, started working with DTRC again back in 1994 um, with uh, various the stakeholders from trade and investment um, and also watching DTRC, how they're helping, helping exporters, helping local manufacturers. It's been a really a privilege to work with DTRC. They try real hard, right, um, to make a difference to our businesses. Um, and I found they've got better. Okay, better at it over the years. So, well done to DTRC for all the efforts um, that you put into South African business and for trying to grow, uh, to grow exporters. So thanks, uh, DTRC. <laughs> and then the, the US government. Um, I've also had an interesting long-term journey with um, working with the US government, working with the American Chamber of Commerce. I've been a board member as a board member, I think it was 2010 to 2012, with the American Chamber of Commerce. And it was really enriching for me to see how um, American businesses and the American government work so closely together with South African business and with the South African government. So I think we're obviously here today because I think the, the American government believe strongly in development of South Africa and Africa. And I think a goer is a really a big reflection of that. Okay? Um, um, if anybody understands how trade agreements work, this is a non-reciprocal trade agreement. Okay? In other words, uh, the US doesn't get preferential access into our market. So we get preferential access into the US market. And that matters. Okay? That, that principle um, position has made a difference to many exporters. And I've worked with many of them as they've grown their businesses, how they've targeted the American market. But working with the US government has been a privilege for me. So thanks for all the efforts US, US government have, have been uh, in creating uh, AGOA for South African and African businesses. And also as I've gone into my own journey, I suppose back into a big uh, professional services firm, I was uh, set up uh, COVID advisory in, in, in 2012 um, and built, I suppose, an, an agile business. And I can relate to many of the stories as I was judging around setting up a business, understanding what your core competence is, uh, uh, is uh, trying to make a difference, trying to sell your service in, in my case, um, making a difference. And I could see that coming through um, in um, um, many of the applicants um, that we had to judge. As you can see the, the, the struggles, the challenges. Um, and to be able to be so brave to go and target the American market is amazing. Okay? Um, so you weren't content just to sell in the South African market your product or your service. You wanted to go and take on the American market where price, quality, and service matter. They really matter. Okay? Um, and if you don't get those basics right, you can do what you like, you're not going to penetrate that market. So again, I think um, congratulations to um, um, all the nominees, all the applicants who were brave enough to take on the American market. Um, it's fantastic to see, and I think um, it's you set a great example, okay? So don't, un don't underestimate the example that you guys have set for other businesses in South Africa and Africa. And as I looked at the criteria for the, um, the awards, um, this, uh, I think a couple were sort of really hit home for me. So the first one was innovation. And as you go through these awards and look at the people's motivations around you really need to be innovative um, to succeed as an exporter. Okay? Whether that's in a product or a service, um, 
As we heard some of the examples around stockpiling, we heard uh, last year's winner, Felskun. You have to be innovative and you, want, you have to be consistently innovative to reinvent yourself and look at your product and be really self-critical. So it was really good to see that one of the criteria is innovation and that's, we saw that through, through many, many of the, uh, um, the applicants. Also something really important, anybody who grows a business needs to be focused. You can't be all things to all people. Okay? Um, you just can't be. Um, and even on my own personal journey, having a focus, choosing what you're really good at and going for it. So it's really having a really focused market strategy and choosing to go and target the American, the American market. And that was clear in all the applicants. They were really clearly focused to succeed in the American market. Businesses don't succeed without people. Okay. And even my own journey is that people matter. Okay. If you don't look after your people and you don't create a strong culture in your organization, the chance of you succeeding as a business and specifically in the American market is going to be remote. So I think as we judge the, the applicants there was clearly a strong focus on team and creating a strong culture um, of, su of success. And fundamentally, successful businesses know how to look after their people. They really do. Okay? And that came through in the applicants. Also, leadership matters. Having a strong leader who makes decisions, who understands where they want to focus, matters. These days, um, we also see a theme through many businesses around focusing on um, ESG. Climate change is something that matters. And focusing on the environmental, social and governance aspects of a business matter. And successful businesses who get it right become more successful. So targeting the American market, I think, is a reflection of that focus. And I suppose fi finally, financial performance matters, right? Okay, and businesses are there to make money and to make margin. Because um, if you don't get that stuff right, <laughs> um, I suppose COVID, even though it was a challenging time, I think taught some, uh, so many businesses some harsh, harsh lessons about financial performance and focusing on the financial mat metrics that matter to your business. So clearly, um, businesses that have been able to penetrate the, the American market have been able to get their financial performance to work for them. So congratulations. So my final couple of points are congratulations to all the companies who were brave enough to take on the US market. It's a really brave step to take on the American market also to enter this competition. It takes bravery to enter a competition because not everybody wins, right? Okay, it's a competition. So. And then finally, to all the winners that we'll hear today. Congratulations, you deserve to win, you're leaders, and hopefully others will follow you. Thank you. Uh, Duane, thank you so, so much indeed. Uh, a great message, I think, to uh, our nominees, our winners here today, but uh, also aspirant exporters there uh, about what is possible. And I hope that uh, the people that we're celebrating here today will serve as a source of inspiration of what can be done. And as you said, bravely uh, 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 taking on US markets, which we know very, very competitive, but the doors have been opened. And the ability to compete is there. And as you, as you rightly said, there are a number of qualities that I think that they displayed. Um, innovation, focus, building teams of good people, leadership and financial performance. And they've all displayed that. And uh, very soon, we're going to be seeing who those winners are. But thank you so much indeed uh, for the hard work of judging. And I'm not going to hold it against you about Ernst Young. I was Coopers and Lybrand years and years ago, which then merged with Pricewaterhouse, 
So which means we're probably going to have EYPWC at some point in the near future. So thank you very much indeed, Dwayne Newman and our judges. Talking about auditors, and we all love auditors, don't we? Yeah? Of course we do. Yes, yes, we do. And it's my great pleasure to welcome uh, the auditors of our results uh, who made sure that this was a fair and transparent process. And don't worry that they're driving smart new cars, all of them. That is coincidental, I promise you. Um, please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Director at uh, Anthony Norman and Associates, Kane Woolmer. All right, good afternoon, everybody, um, and thank you for having us here. Uh, my, I haven't got a long speech, thankfully. I'm sure you don't want to hear the auditors waffling on forever. Um, so I'd just like to keep it short and say that we reviewed all the, the judges' submissions, um, and we are happy that the, uh, the results uh, reflect the position and that there has been no collusion. So if I can hand back over. <laughs> Uh, aren't auditors great? You pay the millions and millions and all they come up with a little certificate. So like five words long. And even then they just say fairly stated. They don't commit to anything. <laughs> oh dear. Thank you very, very much indeed. Important work done by the auditors. Our judges, fantastic. We are about to meet... Uh, our winners now. I know that you've all been waiting uh, with bated breath to find out who's won this year. And I think to get us in the mood, we thought that we'd take a moment and listen to that beautiful voice again from that beautiful woman who I'm very proud to introduce. Uh, Renee continues to perform all over the world. She's really made her name uh, for herself. Um, internationally acclaimed one-woman show, uh, a lead singer in various live bands, most notably Ice and Fire brand. Uh, she's also graced stages all over the world with highlights including performing uh, and singing at the 2010 FIFA World Cup and also in front of presidents, President of Botswana and also the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi. And so she's here for you. Can you believe it? <laughs> we managed to get her. And here she is, ladies and gentlemen, to warm us up and get us ready. Ladies and gentlemen, Renee Afro Rock.
Thank you so much. The next song that I'm about to do, I'm dedicating this one to all the nominees. Don't stop believing. You might just be that one. I'm sure most of you know this one. Isn't she amazing? Yay! Renee Afro Rock. All right, the good news is that she'll be back a little bit later on to sing again. Isn't that exciting? 
Absolutely. And uh, that first song just hit the spot for me because I think it reminded us, of course, of one of our greatest exports ever, Miriam Makeba and that click song. So wonderful. Thank you so much for choosing that song, Renee. Thank you. Best dancer in the house. You win an award all by yourself. <laughs> Right, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to meet this year's winners? Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, to present in our first categories. Please welcome the Executive Director at Atresa, Rose Bletch. All right, here we go. And uh, please feel free to clap like mad when the winner comes up and uh, receives their award, yeah? And uh, we had great nominees in each category, so uh, let's recognize those as well. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's find out who our champions are in the youth and exports category. My name is Tony Wright, I'm the Managing Director of Pepperdew, a proudly South African company that originated in 1995. We focus on the pickle market, with 80% of our products being exported, the USA being a premium focus of our export market. The main focus is the picante peppers, but we make acha sauces, pasta sauces, normal sauces, pour-ons, splash-on sauces, as well as uh, focusing on toll packing products for a range of premium retailers. We've nominated Erica for the Youth and Export Award because of her incredible commitment to the organization in dealing with a, a, a large range of international customers and she handles her position with a plum, dealing with some very difficult uh, uh, issues relating to, to trying to keep the export uh, flow chain working all the time. I started at Pepperdew International in March 2013. I started off as a receptionist and worked my way up to becoming export sales admin manager. Being in the export industry, it has definitely taught me how to multitask and also to think critically. My role is quite extensive and it involves a lot of planning and preparation on a daily basis. I have to stay on top of all of my export orders to ensure that all the deadlines are met. Particularly in our USA market, we managed to ship out more containers in the last two years than we have, and we have seen an extensive growth in that specific market. All it takes is proper communication and sometimes thinking out of the box once in a while. A young person that joins the export industry will definitely bring about new ideas and concepts on how things are done and learn how to deal with different personalities, different cultural backgrounds from numerous customers. The young people will also tend to be more tech smart in this role. My message to the young people that join the export industry would definitely be to persevere in all that they do. Being in the export industry is a very exciting and diverse industry to be in because you're dealing with a lot of people across the world many countries you're going to deal with, you learn about countries and you also got to make sure that your customer comes first in all that you do and go the extra mile for them because they are the bread and the butter of your business and lastly to remember that it is in the smallest tasks that you do do that will determine how you handle the larger tasks at hand. Well done, Erika Scheich, are you here? <laughs>
Oh, well done to our first winner, ladies and gentlemen, Youth and Exports, Sandra Scheidt. Well done. Wow, fantastic, isn't it? Okay, our next category is Female Exporter in the US under a goer. Let's find out who our winners are. I'm Rizal Abramson from Fanboys Fine Foods. I'm an owner partner. We started this business in 1996 primarily as a farming business and because of so much wastage of the fresh produce, the first product was a chili ginger jam which people thought we were crazy at the time to even think about doing peppers in a jam. We were incredibly fortunate that someone picked up one of our chili jams on a deli shelf. They were interested in the product and they happened to be from the UK and that's when our exporting journey began. We have great traceability in that we grow and bottle all of our products and we have all kinds of applications that we do like drying, smoking, fermenting and general pickling. Our product range is fairly wide. We do jams, pestos, sauces, pickles and savourings which are really delicious Mediterranean style vegetables in a delicious marinade. Because our products were preservative free, we were able to enter into the American market. We were lucky enough to be able to go to the Summer Fancy Food Show in New York in 2008. And thereafter, every second year, we were also able to go and this gave us an incredible opportunity to begin exporting and feeling the market, seeing the trends. Our company culture at Fanboss Fine Foods is really important to us. We have so many different departments. Each department has their own supervisor and they are in charge of their team. And we find that it works really well because people take responsibility for their area and their job and they feel empowered and they perform with excellence. I think that part of our success is that our staff are loyal. A lot of our staff have been here for more than 10, 15 years. So we're so proud of that kind of commitment and loyalty from our staff. More than 90% of our staff are women. They bring such an incredible uniqueness to our business that we couldn't function without them. The advice that I would give to young aspiring entrepreneurs would be if you have a passion for a product, be persistent and push yourself. Don't let failures in the initial stages of your business put you off. Persevere, be positive and you will succeed. Fame Boss Foods! <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done, a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Fame Boss Foods. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next category, Black-Owned Exporter. Let's find out who our nominees and winner is. Hi, my name is Tambarai Chirumi and I'm the co-founder of One of Each, which is a mother and daughter design collaboration that focuses on African-inspired handbags and apparel. One of Each started in 2014 
We started with offcuts of leather and fabric. We really wanted to create something that is a luxury item that's coming out of the African continent. We started with 10 bags that we made and started selling them at the Hout Bay Market. After that, we had an opportunity to have a space at the watershed at the waterfront. And that is how we actually started as a business. We're eight years down the line and it's been quite an interesting journey. Exporting was not a decision for us. I think we found ourselves to become an exporter overnight because of the type of product that we made and created. We created a product that appealed to tourists locally. Um, and after that, you know, there were quite a lot of business tourists that would come and actually buy products. And that is how we became an export business. And we, we realized that our product is a product that can reach the international market without us needing to go there directly, but have tourists come here and buy it. Um, and I think that is how the market really opened up for us. Some of the challenges that we faced in exporting to the US market was not being able to be consistent in the market at things like trade shows because trade shows bring quite a lot of business for you. Buyers need to see you there repetitively. So we weren't able to always go to the same trade shows every year. Um, and I think that was you know, one of the, the, the challenges that we faced. The advice I'd give to South African businesses that are interested on embarking on an export journey is that I think it's very important to be authentic with what you're doing. You shouldn't try to be what you're not. Um, and we should go there as proudly Africans. But while we're proudly African, we need to produce quality products and produce things that are really showing that the continent can produce really, really beautiful items that are quality made. Well done, one of each. Unfortunately, they couldn't be with us today, so please let's give them a round of applause so they can hear how we appreciate them. Well done, congratulations on winning this category. All right, and for now, we move on to our next category, which is small-sized exporter. I'm Janneke, the owner of Mia Melange. Mia Melange is a proudly South African business that manufactures homeware and lifestyle products. Our products are made predominantly from 100% cotton rope. We use only local materials to make our products and all our products are made by talented artisans in our studio in Stellenbosch, South Africa. I think international trade is vital for South Africa. I'm very driven by our high unemployment rate and I think one way to create more jobs in South Africa is for us to export our locally made products. There's so much talent in this country. There's so many talented artisans. There's so many people looking for work. If we can grow our export base, then we can grow our jobs. I think the quickest way to grow a customer base is to attend international trade shows because there are so many buyers that attend these shows that are looking for interesting and new products and they come there and they mean serious business and they want to place orders. So my advice would be to look at the option of doing international trade shows. At our first trade show that we attended, we were a few South African businesses that went and we hired one big booth together and we split it up amongst ourselves and our booth looked incredibly professional, in my opinion. It was one of the best ones there, I think. And we had a lot of American customers coming to have a look and when we told them we were from South Africa, they were firstly very surprised. They were surprised that people from a developing country like ours could pull something together like that and have such an amazing product and such good service. And then the second obstacle was the shipping. So they all asked us, you know, if, we're, if we've got warehousing in the States and are we supplying directly from the States? And when we told them that we ship from South Africa, they started to lose interest until we convinced them that shipping from South Africa is actually very easy. South African businesses are not that well perceived, but we have to convince them otherwise. It's such an honor to win this award, we're very excited. 
and we're definitely going to use it in our marketing strategy. We're off to New York in two months again, so we'll take our award with us and show the Americans that we can export with ease to America. And it also means so much for our whole team, so thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Mia Melange, for flying the flag. Well done, small size exporter. And unfortunately, couldn't be with us today as well, but uh, thank you so much for your efforts. Well done. Our next category is medium sized exporter. Let's find out who the nominees and winners are. My name is Emma van Eyck. I am the Director of Operations for Cape Classics. The company was founded by two brothers, Andre and Graham Shearer. They wanted to share with the world our beautiful wines of South Africa. So after extensive research, the US became a promising market and showed untapped possibilities. Our own range consists of three brands. We have the Jandra range. This is for those wine lovers that prefer their wine a little sweeter. Then we have our Indaba range. This is more the traditional varietals. And then we have our Premier brand. This is the Bry wine. This pairs perfectly with any Bry meat. Some of the initial challenges that we faced in accessing the US market was that South African wines was very unknown at that stage. So here at Cape Classics, we believe that behind every farm, every winemaker, every bottle of wine, every grape, there's an untold story. And it's these stories that we gathered and shared with our clients. And this created um, a curiosity and interest, not only in South African wine, but also in South Africa as a whole. We have an amazing team their unwavering commitment and loyalty to the company and their attitude that they will do whatever it takes is definitely a driving force towards our achievements and they're definitely the heartbeat of Cape Classics. Part of our international marketing strategy was to change how we did sales. So we quickly adapted an online platform that our buyers could buy online opposed to from on consumption. I think some of the concerns international markets have with South African exporters is are we uh, reliable? Can we constantly and timelessly supply our product? Because they are well aware of the production challenges that we face here in South Africa. So how we try and address that is accurate forecasting and advanced production to ensure that we are always fully stocked and that we can fulfill every order that we receive. This helps create a confidence that we can be relied upon irrelevant of what is going on around us. I think it would be wonderful if more South African companies started to export. I think it would offer opportunities and um, it will help diversify their revenue. I think advice that I would give people wanting to enter the export market is do in-depth research. Ensure that there is a demand for your product in the market that you're targeting and try and find an advantage like a trade agreement such as Agora. Okay, classics. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> Ah, we're all getting free wine, yeah? <laughs> Fantastic. Well done, Cape Classics. Fly the flag, fly the flag. All right, so those are our first categories. Uh, congratulations to all our nominees and winners so far. And we've got some great winners, yes? Yes? Fantastic. All right, now, uh, Rose, I know that uh, 
You got a special message that you want to share, uh, commendations? This is a little bit out of the norm, but we thought it was special enough to have a feature. There were a number of companies and a number of individuals that shone in this competition for various different reasons. So we decided that we were going to uh, award certificates of special commendation for particular expertise in, in different areas that are contributory to the companies. Um, a go as success. And the first one that I have is Bradwin Ashley Percent, and it's for his major contribution to the growth and exports to the US under AGOA, despite major supply chain disruptions. He managed to find all sorts of solutions to get past these problems, and for that he deserves special commendation. So, congratulations. the others are here. Um, but the next one goes to Marika van Niekirk for her exceptional contribution to exports of Buttercup Trading CC, trading as Elam Spa Products uh, International through her innovative systems development and supply chain relationship building. So I'm not sure whether Marika is here, no, but well done, Marika. <laughs> then we come on to Nsiki Bayela Wines, trading as, as Lena Wines. And they have this award for innovative digital marketing activity, resulting in exceptional export growth in the US and other international markets, specifically in 2021. So, special words of commendation to Aslina Wines. Unfortunately, they can't be here today. Are they here? Oh, I didn't know that you were from the state. Oh, that's amazing. It is, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't know that you were connected. One was the company and the other was the individual, and uh, it was the matchmaking that was required there. Then we have Bayera Marketing PTY Limited, are they? No, not here today, but nevertheless deserving of special commendation for the innovative use of Zulu beadwork to enhancing the branding of its wine and spirits products and in doing so, highlighting the Zulu culture of this country. Um, and they, at the same time, have been creating employment for women in rural Natal. So we felt that they deserved special acclaim for this achievement. So congratulations, Bayera. And the last one is for Phoenix Marine. PTY Limited, for the development of international award-winning innovative products using the latest technologies while simultaneously supporting its local community with skills development programs and a productive waste management system. They've done tremendously well, all their exports going into the US at the moment. Congratulations to Phoenix Marine. Uh, 
Uh, a big hand to all those that received commendations. Well done, congratulations. And to Rose, thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you, Rose Blanche. Okay, so our next category, uh, it's a big one, and this is uh, the winner in the large-sized exporter to the US under our GOA. And to uh, present that award, it's my great pleasure to welcome uh, Minister, Councillor, Commercial Affairs, Sub-Saharan Africa, US Department of Commerce, Cynthia Griffin, and Andy Karras. Please come up onto the stage. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, let's find out who the nominees and the winner in the large sized exporter category is. My name is Quentin Uren. I'm the Group Managing Director for Gendermark Automation. Gendermark Automation supplies assembly solutions to the automotive industry in the areas of powertrain, electric vehicles, catalytic converters, as well as digital solutions. Shall we say our secret sauce is that we are able to build very flexible and scalable solutions, starting with a small solution and then we're able to build up to a fully autonomous system at the end of the day. Gendermark Automation automated a tool changeover, for example. Uh, in America, where the tool changeovers were usually around three and a half hours, and our competitors in Europe were sitting at a half an hour, and coming up with a totally different solution and a complete rethink of how we did it, we were able to bring that tool changeover fully automated down to 35 seconds. This also allowed Gendermark to compete in a global level uh, with one of the best tool changeovers in the world. So the challenges globally, 95% of our businesses export, were the distance and the perception of South Africa, tourism and raw materials, gold, minerals. So we weren't really taken seriously in the beginning, but that was also an advantage for us. Neither did our competitors. We then went in, showed our South African way of doing things as something really special. It gives us a completely different way of thinking and, and approaching any challenge that can do South African resilience is what really has put us streets ahead of our competitors overseas. International trade is critical for South Africa. We cannot be an isolated in any way or form. Trade makes us more competitive, it keeps competition high, and it drives innovation. For me, that is the strongest one. Winning this award means a lot to us. It's validation for what we've done, the path that we've chosen, it validates a lot of our processes and our goals. I am privileged to work with a set of people here that are highly committed to success. So we will use it now in our digital marketing strategy is to get our name out to more people in the United States. Uh, we are also going to be expanding our facilities in the United States, so it will go a long way to helping with that. Gender Mark Automation! Well done, congratulations. Uh, that's our winner of the uh, large size exporter, Gendermark Automation. And to Cynthia and Andy, thank you very, very much indeed as well to both of you. Okay, so um, are you guys ready for the overall winner? Oh, that's it, we do it tomorrow then. Are you, who's ready for the overall winner?
All right, here we go. To help us uh, present this uh, prestigious award, the champion of champions, please welcome uh, Willem van der Spey. <laughs> right, and this overall winner, you really have to be a champion amongst champions because um, the, I think they look at so many qualities and uh, you can see from the people that have won in the different categories, they're all really, really good. So that the person who won has got to be very special. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let us find out who the overall winner of this year's South African exporter to the U.S. under a goer is for 2022. We've met them already, so you can come up. <laughs> uh, well done, yay! <laughs> can you believe it? Firstly, we would like to congratulate all the nominees and winners. Well done. This is not an easy competition, so um, congratulations to every single one of you. Secondly, to the organizers, the International Trade Institute of Southern Africa and USAID and Trade Hub, thank you for the recognition and for this lovely event. Exporting wine to the United States has its challenges, as many of them were mentioned here today. We are competing against more familiar wines. These wines are often award-winning wines from Napa Valley, California, New Zealand, France, the list goes on. However, our wines and other South African wines are standing their ground. And we are also winning awards, and we too are becoming household names, and deservedly so. And with the help of the AGO agreement, we are able to increase the volume of South African wines into the United States market, and this is amazing. We have some of the most amazing wines to offer, so why not share it? So although there are these and many other challenges, our team's perseverance, and the unwavering confidence in our wines. Here we find ourselves, 30 years later, with 97% of all the wine Cape Classics produces being exported to the United States of America. And even though the South African wine category is still quite small, it is growing. And this growth holds a potential for future business expansion not only for Cape Classics and our portfolio of wines, but for all South African wines. And that growth, that, that there is a demand for South Af African wines and that it's increasing is really exciting. It is an absolute privilege to accept this award on behalf of the entire Cape Classics team. I cannot wait to get it back home, to share and to celebrate this achievement with them. Thank you. <laughs> Willem, don't go away, because uh, we've got one last award, actually. Uh, somebody who wasn't here earlier, uh, but is here. We want to recognize uh, this person as well. So congratulations and uh, well done to Oryx Desert Salt, top ago exporter small business. Fantastic. Let's give him a big round of applause, all our winners. Thanks, Villain. Thank you. You can go. <laughs> Thank you very, very much indeed. 
All right, um, Cape Classics, well done. And I'm just listening to your voice and I thought, I must drink more of that wine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just thought we can't celebrate enough without song. And so to salute you and all of our winners today, ladies and gentlemen, ready? <laughs> Thank you, Emma, for an amazing, for an amazing wine. I will be getting 10 of those bottles. I love my wine. So I'm going to sing for you. Congratulations once more. Give her another round of applause. right in front of me because we're all gonna dance. We're all gonna do a line dance. So Mr. DJ, hit it. Here we go. Oh, uh, Peter, Peter, Peter is ready. Peter 
Peter is ready. Peter is ready for the night out because he knows it, right? Yes, it is that one. Here we go. Now we show them how we do it in Mama Motherland. Okay, I think Mr. PJ is having a bit of an issue. Let me help him a bit. Let me have Mr. DJ. We are going to do the dance. There we go, it's called Wet Boots in Bihama now. 